Postnatal depression. Why do we feel ashamed? Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Signpost for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and Kristen Coggan. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. How you doing? I'm well. That's good. That's good. I realise we talk about heavy topics and I think that's why we like to have fun while we're doing that. <laughs> well, you've got to have fun. It, it creates balance, doesn't it? Mm. So we're talking about postnatal depression. Yes. And I purposely put on the second part, why do we feel ashamed? Mm-hmm. Because I really do find that that's the pattern, you know, when people do have postnatal depression. That's mm. the first half. The second half is how they feel about it, mm. you know. So, um, yeah, postnatal depression, do you know much about it? I don't. Look, I'm not an expert. I had a, I had postnatal depression, but Did probably you? not terribly bad because I have depression anyway. <laughs> She says that she a little loves. bit deeper, yeah. um, but you don't really. Oh, yeah, you sort of don't know that you do, and I've heard. Um, it sounds like I've heard stories. It's not. I've I've watched and and any th- any time something on the on the TV, a doco or a or a, a segment on personal depression, I've watched, hmm. and mine was nothing compared to what some ladies go through. Right, absolute like, but they don't know they're there. Yeah, you know, like mm. it's. And it's a cruel thing. It is a cruel thing. It is mm. a cruel thing. So, um, and, and you've had three bubs. Did you get it? One? Two. T- sorry, two. We're friends, remember? <laughs> How many kids have you got, Kirsten? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is disturbing. What is going on with my brain? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on back to postnatal depression. Yeah. I had two children. Thank you. Good to know. <laughs> So was it with yes. one or two? Uh, one. The first one. The first one. And do you mm. think that it was relevant that it was your first, that you were more inclined, or do you think it was where you're at life? Or uh, Look, I think there was a few contributing conf- factors to it. Um, obviously, m- being my first child, I was a little bit out of my depth and a little bit worried. Absolutely. A big, massive um, learning curve. He had breathing problems when he was born, right. and it was hard getting that diagnosed, and... At six weeks, he had surgery and was in intensive care. So that was just... Wow. So it was really full on. So you're trying to be a new mum. Really scary. And we knew something was wrong with him from day dot, but nobody... I was just a neurotic mother. Oh, that's so scary. So I think that all contributed to it for me. Mm, Fair. And, um, yeah, I had a few horrible thoughts in those first six weeks, especially because we just didn't know how it was going to affect him or or what was going to happen. So. And, you know, when you've got this brand new baby... Mm. You're just quite paranoid, aren't you, that they're mm. not going to um, be okay, that you want to check their breathing. That's mm. when there's no medical problem. That's so right. I imagine that would be utterly terrifying. Yeah, it was It was awful. And we, and you know how you're told that your baby's got to sleep on their back and and that's what actually made it worse. So, But we didn't know that because we were doing what we were told. At, you know, the, yeah. Just, yeah, anyway, it was a difficult situation and yep. I think that – and it was confusing and it was highly stressful, so that contributed. Yeah to me then having those issues yeah well you might be surprised to hear that uh, a lot of women who present with personal depression they actually part of their guilt is they actually say i've got a healthy baby i've got support i'm actually okay i actually don't have any big curveballs and yet look at me you know what i mean Mm, yeah um, you had a very significant stressor, which was a compounding factor for you. And many people do have stressors, you know. They'll See, have... I felt guilty because I'd done something wrong. What have I done wrong? Why is he like this? Is it my fault? Really? Did I eat something? When yeah. I was pregnant, like just stupid thoughts. But at the time, they're not. And it's, they're swirling in your brain. You're tired. You're fatigued. Yeah. You've had no sleep. Yeah. And sleep deprivation, and number you're... one form of torture. Yes. And our brain goes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a it's a tough place to be in. Yeah. I just think it's really important to make the point that there's those people who do have stresses that are compounding their experience, mm. but that there's those that don't have stresses, mm. and then they sort of think, well, I don't almost deserve to have a problem because I'm actually I don't have you know stresses mm. on top of having a newborn, and I think that brings us to the point that um, the postnatal depression is literally a stage after having a baby when the brain and the, all the hormones, hormones yep. are just smashing around mm. and there's a portion of women that just get postnatal mm. depression 
and it's 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 a normal thing for mm. that's that group of women and you know roll the dice is that you is that not you and you don't have control over whether you get postnatal mm. depression i think that's the big punchline because mm-hmm. a lot of people feel like they're failing for having it mm. yeah that's i guess that's yeah what i was trying to say before like it's yeah the f- the the feeling that you that people ladies would get because they feel a failure because they've got it and there's no shame it is what it is it's it's well i think like you just said it's hormones it's fatigue it's so much going on yeah and it's a complete lifestyle change overnight it is it is and um they and 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 the brain can go really off the charts with Mm. where your head goes Mm. so a lot of women, um, they don't because they're in such an incredibly dark, dark place. They don't have capacity for their baby, mm. and so they're not feeling that desire to reach yep. for their baby. They're not feeling connection with their baby, and then they feel guilty for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Some people go so far as to say, "I hate my baby. Mm-hmm. I don't want my baby. I don't love my mm-hmm. baby." And of course, they say that because that's you know emotionally what's happening for them. And then they feel so bad. It's like, so frightening. You know, because they've spent all that time in the pregnancy thinking, I want to be a good mum, you know, and am I going to be okay and am I going to pull this off? And then this is their interaction. Am I going to be good enough? Yeah. Am I going to do this child justice? Like it's just a horrible thing. Yeah. And then and then their starting chapter is them being taken over by this postnatal monster. Mm. So it's – I wish – I wish people could understand – that it's not their choice, it's not their fault. Mm. Um, their brain is just not helping them at that moment. Mm. And the best thing they can do is go to their doctor, um, usually jump on some antidepressants, mm. usually, um, absolutely see a psychologist mm. and um, get help. Because mm. you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not the only one. No. And let's jump in, identify it, just say, I'm not okay. Mm. Get help so that we can turn it around quickly mm. and you can get out of that dark tunnel, mm. you know. Um, it's, it's horrendous. I'm really excited though. A lot of the um, obstetricians now actually screen for oh. postnatal depression. Yeah. How do you screen for postnatal depression? Um, well, Just threw that one at you. Yeah, no, no, no. <coughs> well, you know, there is a pre... People, some people are predisposed if they've got mm. a history of depression. So first of all, they're looking at that. Also, um, during the pregnancy... Some people start to become depressed because the hormones are going, mm-hmm. and so they can catch it during the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. But I actually think it's really about educating people to know what the symptoms are, yeah. so that they're like, "Hey, that checklist, I, I really could mark that off now." See, I thought I think I had an advantage at the time because I was, I suffered depression before yeah. I was pregnant. I just always lined myself up as a candidate that I could possibly have it. Yeah. So I was a little bit educated going yeah. into it. Yeah. So it wasn't unexpected and I wasn't – I had an understanding, of, uh, you know, a basic understanding of what depression is for me. Mm. I knew that maybe it had happened so I wasn't surprised. Yeah, yeah. And I knew I, I knew it was – you can handle it, you can get through it. Mm. What did you do? Did you reach for help? Did you – Yes, yeah, so I – um. I what did I do? Like, did you realise it was postnatal depression per se, or just my depression's really flared up? No, no, no. I went to the doctor and yeah, yeah just talked to the GP, I think, and had yeah. res- I probably had re- I think I had resources given to me that I read, and because I was living out in the bush too, right. so I couldn't just access yeah things. And telehealth wasn't a thing then, and yeah, so it was quite isolated. Yeah. Was this century though? But yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you isolated. couldn't go to the corner store. No, no, no. So I think I, I um, went to the GP, had um, sessions with the local health nurse, mm. had resources that I had could read, and learn about, um, and just took it day by day. Yeah, and also your little man, also, um, you know, had the surgery, got yes. got addressed, knew that you yes. know they were going to be okay. Yes, and actually. Uh, uh, I guess I was lucky. The fact that he got through the surgery and he became well, mm. a lot of pressure was off then. So uh-huh. I could deal with, like, it just wasn't as, yeah. my depression wasn't a big deal compared to what that was. Yeah. If that I makes mean, sense. I mean, you know, any any problems you had from then on, you're like, that's okay relative to what we had before, yes. probably. Yes. And I'd had experience with depression. So mm. I just, yeah, went day by day. Yeah. So I think everyone, um, when they're pregnant, they need to just monitor themselves. How's your how's your headspace? Is mm. it is it 
relatively balanced or are you starting to get really pessimistic and negative? Mm. How's your morale? Um, how's your self-care? Mm. Um, how do you, do you feel like your head's above water or you're drowning? And then after the baby's born, just don't assume you'll be okay. You probably will. Mm. But just have in the back of your mind, okay, portion of women do get a bit tropo in the brain afterwards mm. due to the hormones and, and the fatigue and everything. So just keep an eye out. If it happens, any, any sign of it, jump mm. on it straight away. Don't judge yourself. And if it happens, it's not a failure. It's no, it actually don't. just means you care, really. Like That's how I used to think. Like it, yeah. it's, it, I'm, because I care. Yeah. Yeah. This is what, if I didn't care, this I wouldn't be feeling this. So, we, it's, yeah. It, we all have overwhelm and mm. and it is overwhelm. So, yeah, so keep an eye out for it, jump on it, don't judge yourself. And and the good news is you can get in, sort it out, and come out the other way, other other end quick. Reach out, ask for that help. Yeah. Well, thank you, darling. I'm really glad to talk about this one. I've got a yeah. real fire in, the, in my belly on this one. It's um it's a big deal. It is, and we need to talk more about it. Mm. Which is good. Well, thank you so much. No problems. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Kirsten's pointing at me because I could do this thing now. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I've given I've given Kristen this okay. job. So, <laughs> if you want to hear more of Kirsten, you can head to her webpage, kirstenhunterauthor.com. Her Facebook and Instagram handles are Kirsten Hunter Author. Twitter is Kirsten Hunter AU. YouTube channel is Psych in Your Car. And this is Signposts for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter. <laughs> and her sidekick, Kristen. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Bye. Bye.